God is good. And all the time. My dear brothers and sisters, I joyfully welcome all of us to this season of Advent. And I want to say Happy New Year to you all. <laughs> this is the church's New Year, the liturgical New Year. And the church is, this Catholic church is so beautiful. And I, I, every day I keep falling in love with the church. If you were here or you went for weekday mass yesterday, wherever, the last words of the first reading taken from the book of Revelation, chapter 22, verse 7. That's what we ended the ordinary time of the year with. The person who was giving this vision to John, and I believe you know it's Jesus Christ, said, Behold, I am coming soon. And the book of Revelation, chapter 22, ends with verse 21. Before the end of that book of Revelation in verse 20, Jesus says again, Yes, I am coming soon. And immediately after that, after those words we read and heard yesterday, today we begin this beautiful season of Advent. Adventus, that's where the word comes from, which means coming or arrival. So these two readings, you know, the, the reading of yesterday and the season that we begin today just mixes so well that the reading of yesterday puts us in the mood for what we are beginning today, this beautiful season. I am coming soon. And that's my message to all of us today. Jesus says, behold, I am coming soon. And so this period of Advent becomes a season to prepare for the coming of Jesus Christ in the womb of the Virgin Mary, the incarnation. This season gives us the opportunity to get ready for the coming soon of the Son of God, of Jesus Christ, the God-man. But his coming is not just coming at Christmas that we're going to be celebrating in a few weeks from now. There's also another coming, the second coming, the last day. So as we keep in view our preparation for his coming at Christmas, we also keep in view and prepare for the second coming. And there's also yet another coming that sometimes we don't talk about. We keep in mind just these two comings. But there's another coming that happens every day of our lives. He keeps coming to us. Jesus keeps coming to us every day in all the sacraments. He keeps coming to us when we read the scriptures. And even at the end of our individual lives, Jesus comes to us to say, come back home. And so we also have to keep that in view as we prepare for Christmas. We need to prepare for his coming at the end of our individual lives and his coming at the end of this, his second coming at the last day. There are some people who make some arguments. Those who are not Christians say, well, I don't believe in your Christmas. I don't believe in your second coming. Or at least those who say they do not believe, those who are not Christians who say we don't believe in your Christmas, we don't believe in your second coming, at least they know they will die. So they believe they will die. Whether they believe it or not, they will still die. Some Christians who say, well, we don't believe in the second coming. We believe in Jesus Christ. They still believe that he was born. So, I don't want us, the church gives us the opportunity, this period of Advent, not to be caught in this disbelief of these brothers and sisters of ours who just wave away Christmas and wave away the second coming and wave away the judgment that all of us are going to be subjected to. And people who lived good lives, we, go to, we see God face to face in heaven, 
and those who live bad lives will be doomed. So we don't, the church does not want us to be caught in that disbelief or to be caught on our ways. And so Jesus, in the gospel of today, warns us, just like St. Paul warns us in the second reading. Jesus compares. His second coming compares also his coming at our own individual deaths to the days of Noah. What happened in the days of Noah? Noah was preaching and telling people to get converted and come back to God. That God was coming with the flood to wash away the sinful man. And they ignored him. They laughed at him. They mocked him. They jeered at him. They refused to take his word. And they were living their lives. And Jesus continues to say, they were eating and they were drinking, they were marrying and giving in marriages until the flood came and just a few people were able to enter the ark and were saved. Jesus does not want you and I to be caught on our ways because some of us will be carried away in the euphoria of preparation for Christmas. Yes, two days ago or three days ago was Thanksgiving and the very next day is all about decorating our houses and our homes, decorating our streets, preparing for Christmas. And then we'll be caught up in these decorations and these material preparations. And then forgetting the spiritual preparation that is most important. And we'll be, we'll be caught on our ways. Just like these people in the days of Noah were caught on our ways. Jesus doesn't want that to happen to you and to me. And so he wants us. He wants us to be prepared. He wants us to be ready. Something happened exactly one year and 10 days after I was born. Not to me, but somewhere here in America. And I read it somewhere that a group of about 100 young men were dancing to their soul rock music in one of the, whatever, whatever, one of the gyms or auditoriums in Port Chester. It's in the border between New York and uh, Connecticut. They were dancing away. <clears throat> and suddenly, there was flames and smoke. It engulfed the building where they were dancing. And within a very short time, 24 people were dead. Some were burnt by the flame. Some were choked by smoke. Some were trodden upon as people were struggling to exit through the, through the door. So 24 people died. And then the mayor of Port Chester, giving his press interview, said that these hundred young men ignored the warnings of the band manager, who, when he saw the smoke, frantically and repeatedly asked them to get away from the hall. They ignored him. And 24 people paid with their lives. Today, the Lord Jesus Christ is warning all of us to keep in our minds and in our hearts that every day of our lives we get closer and closer to his coming at our individual deaths and the last day. Every day. His coming at our individual deaths is closer to you and to me than it was yesterday. His coming at our individual death is closer at the end of, will be closer at the end of this mass than it was at the beginning of this mass. And this is true. It's not to scare us, but to get us prepared, to get us ready. And what should we do? Paul gives us, all the readings as a matter of fact, gives us a light, an instruction, and one he says, throw off the works of darkness. Throw off the works of darkness. The period of Advent is a period to throw away all works of darkness. Everything that is against Jesus, the light, throw it off. He calls us to stick to the light. Whatever we would not want people to see us do, those are the things we do in the darkness. And so he wants us to leave in the light always that Jesus sees whatever we do even in darkness and in light 
And so we should not try to pretend that the Lord does not see me, or the Lord, I mean, I mean, I am far away from him. He wants us to be children of the light, children of God. He wants our words, our deeds, our habits, our way of life to be aware of lives that is, you know, who, what it should be. What do you of our call as Christians? When people see what we do, what we hear, what we say, it will be very exemplary and will be defined to those who hear it and defined to ourselves too. Throw away the works of darkness. Don't get involved in orgies and drunkenness. Not in promiscuity. Not in lust. Say no to all these things that are against God, against the light. And Isaiah the prophet in the first reading ends with saying, let us walk in the light of the Lord. It's an invitation that this period of Advent is a time to walk in the light of the Lord. And our responsibility as time is so beautiful. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. What do we come to do in the house of the Lord? We come to worship him. We come to hear his word and to learn more about him and to try to keep his commandments. These are the instructions and injunctions of God to us throughout this period of Advent. Desire to be. Rejoice coming to the house of God to hear his word, to know what he wants from you and from me, and to try to do them. By so doing, we'll be walking in the light, just like Isaiah is inviting all of us. Let us walk in the light of the Lord. And then what again are we expected to do this period of Advent? It's a period to reconcile. St. Paul continues. He says, there should be no rivalry. There should be no jealousy. It's a time we've said the prayers, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. It's a time to reconcile with God. It's a time to reconcile with our neighbor, with our brothers, and with our sisters. It's a time to come back to the Lord. It's a time to heed this warning that he is coming at the time we do not know. Jesus is clear about that in the gospel of today. He is coming at a time none of us knows, just like the people of the days of Noah. And so, we need to be ever ready, ever prepared, utilizing the opportunity of this period of Advent. During the Lenten season, I said something that I keep saying to myself. Every Advent, every Lent, I tell myself, this may be your last Advent, or this may be your last Lent on earth. And so I try to make the best use of it. This is a period of grace. That is why we put on this purple. It's penitential in nature, even though it's not Lent in season. It's a period of preparation. So make the best use of it. Do not be sleeping. St. Paul says, be awake. Wake up from your sleep. And Jesus says, do not be caught away. Don't be sleeping. Behold, I am coming soon. Those are the words of Jesus Christ, my dear brothers and my dear sisters. Wake up from your slumber, you and I. We should not be thinking we have a long number of years to live. That's our prayer, yes. But we, because we do not know when he is coming, we should get up, wake up now, and seek the face of God. Throw away the yokes of darkness, whatever darkness. The works of darkness. And then, reconcile today, my dear brothers and my dear sisters. And he calls you and me, and he says, Turn to me, O man, and be saved, says the Lord, for I am God. There is no other God beside me. I call your name. St. Paul says, brothers and sisters, you and I, he calls us to come to him and be saved. So that our Christmas will be a beautiful one. We need to prepare to be able to celebrate the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we need to be prepared to meet him whenever he comes and says, come back to me. It is time to come back home.